In today's video, we're going to start learning how to apply the page object model when building a software automation framework. If you don't know what the page object model is, I'll put a link in the video description so you can learn more. Instead of building everything at once, we're going to take this in baby steps. Welcome to Automate Now. This is Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. Let's do a quick recap as we normally do on what we've done so far. So here we have two tests that we've created. One that checks the page title and the other one that checks specific text. In the last video, we learned how to refactor this test in order to reduce code duplication. So we created these two other methods here. One is called setup and the other one is called teardown. The setup method opens up the browser and navigates to automatenow.io. The teardown method quits the browser. Let's head over to the Automate Now website. So, so far we have only navigated to the home page and we've written a couple of tests for this page. Next, we want to start working on this page here, which is called Sandbox. If we click here, you will find a page that has been dedicated for automation purposes. It has many of the common elements that you will find as you begin to automate a web application. From the page object model, we know that for each one of these screens, we should create a separate page object. So for example, if we're on the home page, we would create a Java class called home page. The same thing goes for blog and sandbox. We would need to create a separate Java class for each one of these screens. And if we go back to our project, we can see that we have already done one of the pages here, the home page. Although we have done some code refactoring, we are not done yet. In order to implement the page object model, we're going to need to do some more refactoring. Let me point out a couple of things that are wrong with this setup here. For example, this before suite and after suite methods do not belong to this class. They need to be in a class of their own. And if we look at this test here where we have this XPath locator being hard coded in our test, this is something that we're also going to need to change since it is not a good practice to have this shown in this way. So how do we start implementing the page object model? Let us begin by looking at this project structure. You will see that there are two folders here under the source folder called main and test. Main will need to contain all of our page objects and test will need to contain all of our tests. So let us begin by adding some page objects to the main folder. We're going to expand this folder. And as you can see, we have another folder here called Java. And this is a default folder that is provided for us. What we're going to do is right click on this folder here. I'm going to say new package. And it's common practice to use the website that you're testing as the package name. So in my case, I'm going to say io.automate now. And since this package is going to contain my page objects, I'm going to call it dot pages and hit enter. Now we have this package here to which we can start adding page objects. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say new Java class. And here I'm going to create my first page object for the home page. So I'm simply going to call it home page and hit enter. If you take a look at the application here, we now have a page object for this home page here. Now we need to create a page object for the sandbox page since we're going to be working on that next. So let's go ahead and do that. Once again, I'm going to right click on this package and say new Java class. And this one is going to be called sandbox page. Let us now direct our attention to the test folder. Remember that I said that all our tests are going to be located within this test folder. Here we have a Java folder and then we had created a package here called automate now. Following the same convention as we did up here, we're going to rename this package by right clicking and going to refactor and then rename. And this is also going to be called io.automate now. And at the end, instead of pages, we're going to call it tests. And then we're going to click refactor. The next thing we're going to do here is rename this class. So let's right click here, refactor, rename. And we're simply going to rename it to homepage tests. We did that to give it a more appropriate name since we are testing the homepage in this class. We're going to go ahead and add another class here and go to new. Java class, and this one is going to be sandbox test. This class will contain all the tests related to the sandbox screen. Please pause the video or rewatch it if you need to, to better understand what has happened. So far we have created two page objects here, and we have created two corresponding page classes. The idea behind the page object model is that for every test class, you will typically have a corresponding page object. So in our case, we have this class called sandbox tests and it has a corresponding sandbox page class. The home page test class also has a corresponding page object called home page. 
As we move forward, you will see how all this ties together. Let us go back to the homepage test class. Recall that I said that these two methods here should not be inside of this class and that they should be in a class of their own. Such class is called a base class and we're going to create it next. So we're going to right click here and say new Java class. And this class name is going to be called base test. What this base class will contain is any code that is common to all the other classes within this package. So for example, if we go back to this homepage test class, we have this setup and teardown methods here. These methods would also be needed in the sandbox test class when we start developing tests there. So instead of duplicating this code in each one of these classes, we're going to need to relocate this code. So let's just go ahead and grab all of this here and say cut. Now we're going to go to our base class and we're going to paste this code in here. So let's break down what we've done here. We went ahead and moved the code that was located in this class and put it in the base class. In this way, we can make these methods available for all the other classes inside of this package. You will notice that if we go back here to our tests, now the driver is not being recognized. So we're going to need to fix that. And the way we do that is by using an inheritance. Inheritance is an object-oriented programming concept by which you can have parent and child relationships. So for example, in this case, our parent will be the base class and the children will be any other class that's inheriting from that parent class. So in our case, we have this homepage test class. It will become a child of the base test class. The way we do that in Java is by using the keyword extends and we say extends and the name of the parent class. In our case, base tests. Notice that the error went away because now this class has access to the methods located inside of this base test class. By doing that, we can see how our tests are becoming easier and easier to read. No longer do we need to worry about setting out the browser and shutting down the browser within our tests. That is now the responsibility of the base class. Let's go ahead and remove some of this blank space here. We also see that some of these import statements here have been grayed out. That simply means that we're no longer using them, so we can go ahead and delete them. Next, I'm going to run these tests to make sure that they're still working. And indeed they are. Both of the tests passed. Another thing that I would like to point out about the page object model is that your test classes, such as this one, should only be concerned on what we're doing, not how we are doing it. By getting rid of the setup and teardown methods, we are helping to achieve that goal. However, there are still more things that can be done to get to 100% of achieving that goal. In the next video, we're going to go over how we can create methods inside of the page objects that can later be used by our tests. In this way, we're going to get rid of some of the implementation details that we're currently seeing in our tests, such as this one here. In the meantime, let's just do one more housekeeping item here. Notice that we have some comments here. We can actually move these comments up here. Next to this test annotation, we can use an open and close parentheses and we can use an attribute called description. And this will describe what our test is doing. We add the description inside quotes. So I'm simply going to move this text up here. I'm going to do the same thing for this other test here. We have made tremendous progress today and I can't wait to see you on the next video. Thank you.